In this video, I'm going to take this 2006 Mac Mini and upgrade it. Upgrade it quite a bit. We're going to go from a Core Duo CPU to a Core 2 Duo CPU, adding about a 10 to 20 percent boost in uh, the CPU power. Additionally, I'm going to rip out the old hard drive and put in a SSD drive and then take it from one gig of memory up to two gigs of memory. The max is four, but we'll sort of see if we even need it. On top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and update the firmware. Take this from a 1,1 Mac Mini to a 2,1 Mac Mini, which enables me to install 10.7 as an operating system rather than 10.6, which was the maximum prior to the CPU replacement. So the process is gonna be tear it open, put the CPU in, put the memory in, put the disk in, and then go through the process of taking it from a 10.6 uh, machine with 1,1 firmware to 2,1 firmware and 10.7. Uh, I'm also gonna play around with a couple other things, see sort of what the process would look like to get other operating systems installed, do a compare and contrast with a 2007 iMac, which sits in right around the same price range as these do, um, but it comes with a monitor and it has a little bit newer hardware, just slightly newer hardware. So see, once again, is this 2006 Mac Mini worth it? What kind of a scenario, what kind of way can you use one of these older machines, you know, day to day, uh, or even as a little server, things like that. So it should be a fun video just, just to find out where does this Mac Mini sit today in 2020 um, as a usable computer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about teardown. Now, I've actually got this one already popped open, uh, and I wanna talk about how I was able to do that. So, you can notice the little clips along the side here, and essentially what you need is a flat, and I'd say is I've got some plastic tools, similar but not the same as this, or a, <laughs> a credit card that you can slide just right along the inside edge here of the aluminum case and push in these clips. And you actually need to have multiple of those to get this thing open, right? Or you have to slide it up far enough so that it doesn't fall back down and clip into these clips. The teardown of the Mac Mini isn't too bad, actually. Squeeze in on some clips for the antenna and be sure to remove it carefully if you want to be able to reuse that later. It comes right up. Additionally, you'll have about four screws around the outside and then this little card on the back that connects the CD drive as well as the hard drive to the motherboard. Just route around the cables, remove the ribbon that, that basically plugs into that and it should come out once you remove the screws. After that, uh, you just wanna <laughs> remove anything you could damage. There's a couple little pins on the front and then pull the motherboard out. Clean it off, of course. And then another key thing here, on the back of the board, I used a plastic tool to push in the plastic pins that hold the heatsink onto the CPU. Be careful not to break those because, hey, good luck finding replacements. Then again, you could probably get away with just using two. I did a little bit of testing with just two installed. So you can see a workaround pushing in the clips and then boom, it's off. One thing you'll notice, when I pulled off the heat sink, the old thermal paste was so, well, hard. It pulled the CPU out with it. So be careful when you're removing the heat sink, even though it's supposed to lock in place, mine came out. There's one more clip that holds on the thermal sensor for the heat sink. So go ahead and disconnect that from the board and you should be good to go now. Be sure to unlock the, um, the CPU socket because it actually has a little you put a flat head screwdriver in there and turn it left and right to unlock and lock it because mine because it pulled the cpu out it was still locked and i just had to unlock it before putting in my replacement cpu the replacement cpu just check the upper corner find where the little arrow is that matches up should just slot right in there once again Remember to lock the CPU in place using a flathead screwdriver, turning that little black plastic piece right there. And then put some nice thermal compound on the top. Nothing crazy here. These things 
they do run a little warm, but uh, it's not that bad. Then push the pins back into place to hold the heat sink in. And uh, of course, remember to plug in that cord that was underneath it and drop in your SSD while you're there and the memory. I didn't detail that too much because they're fairly straightforward. I actually didn't put all the screws back in yet because I wanted to flash the firmware and make sure it was all running before moving on to that step. All right, so to update the firmware for your 2006 Mac Mini, go ahead and head out to dosdude1.com, select My Software, scroll down to the bottom to Other Software, and here you are, the Firmware Update Tool is right at the top. Go ahead and download that, extract it, drag it over to the desktop just to make it easier. Boom, there we go. Install the firmware and then shut down your machine completely. On restart, hold down on the power button until it flashes goofy. You'll see that here in a second. I like to hold it for a little bit longer after the flash and then let go. You should hear a weird chime and the screen will flash a couple times. Once the machine is started up, go into About the Mac and just confirm that it says it's a 2,1 Mac now in the More Info panel. There we go. Ready to rock. I did have to reseat my RAM to get it to show 2 gigabytes after this, though. Okay, this is where things started to get interesting. First up, I actually went out and tried to find some sort of a benchmark that would enable me to better compare the performance in 10.6 to 10.7 to non-upgraded to upgraded to uh, my uh, iMac. And it was difficult to find any benchmarks that are more recent that also had older versions that would still work, right? So I tried doing Geekbench and while it does have an older version that would run on 10.6 and 10.7, it wouldn't actually produce results. It would run the entire test, try to upload and fail. I'm assuming they just don't accept those results anymore. And rather than displaying them on the screen, it just drops it. Xbench did run, and I did see some bump in performance from the CPU, but honestly, most of the usability that I was seeing was from the faster disk, this SSD drive, and from uh, having additional memory now so that you're not having to go to the disk to receive uh, information when you load up a browser or open multiple tabs in Chrome. Now, I think usability-wise, it was a big improvement for the SSD. That's one thing I'll say. CPU, not as much, but the CPU upgrade allows you to get to Mac OS 10.7. So uh, I'll show a few different uh, scenarios here. One sort of browsing the internet, another one um, playing around with some different YouTube videos. I found it to actually work fairly well with like 480p YouTube videos. Overall, um, not a bad experience. Uh, the Xbench results, they weren't really that interesting, honestly. Yeah, there's a performance bump from the CPU, but the GPU is gonna be holding you back, and that is what is attached to the motherboard, and that is what stops you from being able to update to say El Capitan. So nothing too crazy there. The big holdback here now is the GPU that's built into the machine. All right, for a little bit of a comparative test, I took my old 2007 iMac that has not been updated at all, except for having three gigabytes of memory. So it has a spinning old hard drive and it has the original CPU that came with it, which is still a little bit better, stronger than the one in the Mac mini. And what I did was I just browsed around a little bit and a few things to note. Browsing wise, it was better. It was smoother, scrolling, once the browser was open, it was great. You'll notice here, I typed in activity and nothing, it just hangs. This is the hard drive totally just being the bottleneck here. Wait for it, it actually did populate. So the SSD in the Mac mini, 100% better, right? Actually way more than that, probably like five times better when it comes to 
opening applications and just feeling that responsiveness. So a win there for the Mac Mini. Responsiveness was definitely better. Um, but the overall experience, once you have the app open, the iMac was just destroying it. And it comes down to the GPU again. So the GPU in the iMac is way newer. It just helps with the rendering of applications. Um, the SSD was absolutely helping the Mac Mini open up applications quicker, but then once they were open, the experience just wasn't as good. Uh, and you can sort of see here playing around, going to a couple different sites. It was just, it was responsive. It was a better browsing experience on the iMac. Um, and I mean, I paid the same for both of them. Basically, you know, free is what you can get, but let's just say that really the going price is gonna be around 20 to $40 for either one of these. And one comes with a monitor and speakers, right? All built into it. Uh, so just a heads up there. Um, th this was not necessarily meant to be scientific exactly, but yeah, the, the iMac definitely wins this comparison test, even without the SSD. So is it worth it to upgrade a 2006 Mac Mini? Let's go through the positives here. It's moderately easy to tear down. The hardware that you put into it is pretty inexpensive. The CPU, $10. The memory, $10. Uh, the SSD, $20, depending on the size that you choose. So $40 total to upgrade. If you got it for $20 though, you're sitting at about $60. So let's be conscious here that it's not inexpensive overall. So pretty easy to upgrade, pretty easy to get going. Um, but let's, let's then get into usability wise. Uh, SSD was the biggest performance improvement and it did make OS 10.6 and 10.7 more responsive. But you still can't get past 10.7 and why is that? Now let's get into the negatives here. The GPU on this thing, um, it's the old Intel GMA 950. It's, it's bad, right? We saw in the comparison to the 2007 iMac, the 2000, 2007 iMac was usable. Uh, it still is a good machine, right? But this one is, with the upgrades, just barely usable. And I would even say not so fun to use because we're stuck on 10.7, right? So you got an outdated browser, outdated everything, and you can't go any further than that. And as a Linux machine, you're dealing with a 32-bit uh, EFI, which means that it's really difficult to actually get Linux installed on this. Well, not really difficult, but difficult enough that it's annoying and not fun. And then same goes for Windows. So you've got an outdated operating system, you've got a $60 price tag, and power usage is 45 watts. Uh, it's not the most usable experience. It's not worth it. Uh, these 2006 Mac minis should probably go the way of the Dodo and uh, be recycled. Uh, my plan, tear out everything that I put into it, sell that, and potentially reuse the case. Put a Raspberry Pi 4 in here, which you can get a two and a four gig model of those for probably about the same price uh, with this one fully upgraded, maybe even a little bit less, and it'll be a much better, more usable experience if you're thinking of doing some sort of a, you know, music player, video player, uh, basic web browsing. Yeah. That is my conclusion. Not worth it. Don't go through the process of trying to get these. Don't go through the process of even upgrading them because the CPU wasn't a big deal, right? The newer operating system didn't really help that much. Um, I would say just avoid these in general and instead, uh, Play around with some different technology. <laughs> Get a 2007 iMac instead. Same price and it comes with a monitor too. All right, uh, cool. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe and like if you can. And 